video I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic equations. So remember, quadratic equations are just equations like this that have a letter that's squared. So if you look at the first one, I'm actually going to show you two different methods for the first one. In order to work out the value of x, we could use a method that's similar to when you solve linear equations, in that you're going to move everything away from the x value until x is by itself. So that would mean moving that negative 25 to the other side of the equation, so that it becomes positive. And then getting rid of the squared, so the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So you would square root both sides of the equation. Remember, if you square root a square, it just cancels out and you're left with x. And on the right hand side, you've got to square root 25. Just be careful because when you square root, you get two answers. The square root of 25 is 5, but it could also be negative 5. Because minus 5 squared, so minus 5 times minus 5, is also positive 25. So that's the first method. That was nice and quick and easy, I think, for that one. The other method I'm going to show you is by factorising. Now, hopefully, you recognise this type of factorising questions as being the difference of two squares. Because here's the difference, here's a square letter and here's a square number. If you don't know what the difference of two squares is, I would have a look at the other video I've got on that, just so you know what I'm talking about. So whenever you have the difference of two squares, remember you're factorising into double brackets. Then you can just pop the x values in, because x times x gives you the x squared. Remember inside the brackets, one sign is positive and one sign is negative, it doesn't matter on the order. And then the number is just the square root of 25, which is 5. So I have factorised this quadratic. Now, for finding the values of x, because remember when you're solving, you've got to work out the values of x, what you need to do is use this idea here that the answer is 0. Remember when you multiply a number by 0, the answer is always 0, which means either this is a number and this bracket is zero, so a number times zero gives me zero, or the other way around. This bracket is zero and this is a number, so zero times a number also gives me zero. Well, if this bracket, if we pretend this bracket is equal to zero, what's the value of x? Well, the value of x must be negative five, because negative five plus five is just zero. So that gives me the first value of x. Then we need to look at the other bracket and pretend that this bracket is zero. So if this bracket is equal to zero, it means that that value of x must be positive five, because five minus five is zero. So that gives me my second value of x. So you can see, I've got the same answer with both of those methods, and either one is fine. Okay, on to number two. Well, we can't use that first first method for this one because we've got two x terms, one of which is x squared and one of which is x. We can't separate x from everything. So what you need to do is factorise. So remember, factorise means putting into brackets. So this one goes into double brackets because remember you've got x squared, x and number, so it always goes into double brackets. The x values you can just pop in because x times x is x squared. Now remember, these two numbers multiply to give positive 24 and they add to give positive 10. Well, if you're good at your times tables, hopefully it doesn't take you too long to figure these out. I know that it's positive 4 and positive 6 in any particular order because 4 times 6 gives me 24 and then I've got 4x and 6x which add to give 10x. But remember, we're not finished because the question is to solve the quadratic. So we have to work out the values of x. So, just like when I said before, you have to put that bracket equal to zero. Because zero times a number gives me zero, and then we do the same thing for the other bracket. Well, if I imagine that this bracket is equal to zero, the value of x must be negative four, because negative four plus four is just zero. So that gives me the first value of x. Now, the second one is when we imagine this bracket is zero. So if this bracket is zero, then x must be negative six, because negative six plus six is also zero. 
So that gives me the other value of x. So a quick way to just work these out, okay, is just to notice that whenever you've got a single x, like in all of these ones here, the solutions of x are just the same digit as what's inside the brackets, but the other sign. So it's negative 4 and negative 6, and positive 5 and negative 5. But that only works when it's a single x, and I'll show you why in the next example. Okay, so here I've got another quadratic, and just to save time, I factorised this one already. This one's a little bit harder to factorise because there's a number in front of the x squared. So you can either put this into brackets using a bit of sensible guesswork, or you can use that method PATH, P-A-F, and I explain that in another video of how to factorise when there's a number in front of the x squared. So do your factorising part, and then, just like before, consider the values of x when you put each bracket to zero. So if I take the first bracket and I imagine that this bracket is equal to zero because zero times a number gives me zero, well, I'm just going to write it out down here. 2x minus 3 equals zero because now I'm actually just solving a linear equation. Remember when you're solving, you have to undo what's happening around x until x is by itself. Well, the opposite of minus 3 is to plus 3 and remember, you must do the same thing to both sides. The left-hand side just cancels to zero, and so you're left with 2x. And on the right-hand side, when I add those, I get 3. The next step is to get rid of the 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. Remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So 2 divided by 2 just leaves me with 1x. And on the right-hand side, 3 divided by 2, well, you can write it as 3 over 2 or 1.5 if you prefer. So we've solved and we found our first value of x. Then we have to consider what would happen if this bracket was zero instead. Well, just like earlier, it's just this number but the opposite sign. Remember when it was just a single x, the quick way to remember is just this same number but the opposite sign. So that gives us x equals minus one. Okay, which makes sense because minus one plus one is zero. Okay, so I've solved the quadratic. I've got one more hard one to finish. Okay, so here's my final example. Notice how so far in the other questions, the quadratic is always equal to zero. It has to equal zero before you can solve. So on this one, we need to make it equal zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that x term to the other side of the equation so that I've got zero left on the left hand side. The 5x squared just stays the same and this changes to a negative 12x. Okay, and I will try to keep the x squared term as a positive. That's why I moved the 12x over here rather than the 5x over that way. But it doesn't really matter, you can still solve it the other way. So next up, all I'm going to do, just like in all the other questions, I'm going to factorise. So the only thing that's common in these two terms is the letter x. So I'm going to write x and then open my brackets. So what do I multiply x by to get back to 5x squared? Well, just 5x. And what do I multiply x by to get back to negative 12x? Well, just negative 12. So again, there will be two values of x. The first one is just zero, because if x is zero, zero times a number gives me zero. So that's the first solution of x. The other one is, just like in the other questions, is if we imagine this bracket is equal to zero. So I'm going to write that out over here, 5x minus 12, and I'm going to put it equal to zero. And now I'm going to solve that linear equation to find x. So I need to add 12 to both sides. The left side just cancels. So I'm left with 5x equals 12. And then I divide by 5 on both sides in order to find the value of x. So 
If you're not very good at solving linear equations, then maybe some, that's something you can practice. So that is just 12 over 5. So that's the other solution of x. Okay, so we've got x equals 0 or x equals 12 over 5, and I can't simplify that fraction. So remember, when you're solving quadratic equations, it must equal 0 before you can do your factorising and your solving. So this isn't the only way of solving quadratic equations. There are some other methods, for example, solving using the quadratic formula. But that's something I'll cover in another video. So that's all for now, and goodbye from me.